Welcome to Eye on the Illini. This is Mike Kegley here with Kedrick Prince. We are talking about recruiting and it is portal combat time. Kedrick, six foot ten, two hundred and three pound forward, Kerry Booth from Notre Dame. He was uh averaged six point four points a game, four point three rebounds, shot uh not as well from the three as what maybe you know you would have hoped, but still was uh twenty nine seven from the three point as a freshman who shot over a hundred threes. He's going to be a sophomore coming to University of Illinois. Give me some of your thoughts on uh, Kerry Booth and what he brings to the table. I think his upside. I think that's why they were in love with him when he entered the portal. He's a lot like Coleman Hawkins, a little bit more athletic than Coleman. Obviously, didn't shoot as well from the perimeter. But uh, me personally, he was a freshman last year two freshmen last year, and, I mean, not a lot of guys can come in and just, you know, shoot well from the three, and some do, some don't, but, you know, the potential is there. So, and I think that's what they like. Brad likes guys that are mobile enough and that can, who can stretch it, and, I mean, they, I like, when you see the game footage of him and highlights, they throw a lot of dunks to him. Uh, he, he does really good in pick and roll action, which I think they're probably going to get back to depending upon, you know, what the NCAA, you know, what, what they'll do with Marcus Domas, who's applying for another year of eligibility with his legal team. So they are pursuing that. So people are going to ask us, you know, you heard it here first. Yes, they're trying to get that done. But um, the style of play, I think they like to get back to where, you know, it's more or less the freelance offense with the guards that they're recruiting. And, and with him, because, his, you know, his father, you know, playing the Big Ten, Calvin Booth in Penn State from Penn State 1998, uh, good player, uh, good genes. I just think if he's in the right system and, you know, and Illinois has done really well with allowing players that freedom, which is what they like. You know, Mike, we've talked a lot about when Brad first got here, his sales pitch, and now he can give out game film and saying, hey, you know what? This is you. And Booth saw an awful lot of Coleman Hawkins on his great days when he was playing at that same position. Um, like I said to you, the one glaring thing is he's a lot more athletic. He's not as polished as Coleman because Coleman's really, really polished as a player. Um, but he's definitely much more athletic. I thought the interesting, breaking down some film on him, I thought he's a very – He's got some lift when he goes up and jumps. I mean, he had uh, some really nice lob plays, got up for some rebounds. I, I don't know that if he's a, he's a quick a quick jumper, but he is a, a good leaper in terms of getting up in the air. Uh, the other thing I thought was interesting is got a nice uh, release point on his jump shot, and he's right-handed. But I noticed when he got free a lot on the dribble. Uh, it was using his left hand to get a couple dribbles past guys, and then he might, you know, go either way. But I, I thought it, I was really happy to see the offhand be so well used by him out on the court, which a lot of times you think of a 6'10 guy, you kind of think of, well, they can dribble about three times and then they dribble into trouble. It, he he definitely seems to to have that opportunity to use the dribble to get himself open. And I thought he was really good at the catch, the catch and shoot threes. He, that, that seemed to be his comfort zone, you know, where he would go. Uh, it was an inside out pass. We'll have to see who's in the five position to throw the inside out pass, but it was nice to see that as well. Yeah. I can say that he's a well-rounded player. His three ball looks kind of funky to me. If, if you will, it looks like there's a hitch in it. Yep. You know, when I first saw a lot of it, it kind of reminded me of Marcus Domas because he has a little hitch in his three-point shot as well. But that's something that probably could be tweaked. Um, I know the Illinois staff down there, I think they've done a good job, or oh, they've shown a good job with Coleman. His three-point shooting picked up, and, you know, every year he got better. And Terrence Shannon, wow, you know what? He was great behind the three-point line. So, But to answer your question, Mike, uh, I do. I think, you know, him being able to put the ball on the floor and to be able to get by people. And like, you know, I mentioned the fact that his father played and so, you know, he's well coached and he's well schooled. And the thing that I think people, you know, should know is coming out of high school, like I've said before, I'm not a big NBA guy. I'm not a big analytical guy when it comes to NBA, but this kid coming out of high school, I had a lot of NBA guys looking at him because he's what an NBA player looks like. 
He's six nine, six ten. He's long, he, and he's going to become better uh, given the right system. And you know, obviously, you know, I, I guess Notre Dame wasn't the perfect fit for him, or maybe because the way they used him or didn't use him. But a lot of NBA guys are, you know, thinking, hey, you know what? This is a guy that can come in. He can defend. He's tall enough. And for the people out there who old school timers, it doesn't matter how many points you average a game. They just look at your upside, and he's young. And if you look at the roster that they're putting together, the guys that actually have committed, the younger guys are not like the fifth-year seniors that they've had in the past. So which means that you may not see 100 transfers in the portal next next couple of years because – I think they're going out, they're going to put together an amazing class and try to build on it. Yeah, and I thought, uh, I think he's going to need a couple of years before he goes to the to the NBA. I just don't see him being a guy who's going to come to Illinois in one year and elevate his game to the point where he can go compete with the big boys up there. Now, I could be proven wrong. Lord knows I've been wrong before. But I do think he's a guy like you talked about when you compare – Xavier Booker, who so far hasn't went into the portal from Michigan State, if you have Xavier Booker, he's got so much physical talent that you'd probably have him for a year. Whereas with um, Harry Booth, I think you may end up having him for two, maybe three years. And he could be just like Coleman Hawkins, where he rounds off his game to where he's a Swiss Army knife who can do a lot of things. Booker is a really good comparison because that's what frustrated the Michigan State fans and you know, I'm, I, there was a lot of talk about two months ago that he was going to enter the portal. Hasn't yet, and he stayed in it, but that's a really good comparison. When you see a guy that tall who can stretch a floor, floor and can shoot it, that is the way the game is evolving. I mean, but then on the flip side, you know, we talked about you know, on our last podcast, and in fact, the two teams that were in the national championship game had those old school bigs. Yes. So, you know, you got to – I guess if it's a recipe for short term or versus long term, but at the, and for me the way the game is, I would much rather have a guy. The offense looks better to me when you have four four guys or five guys moving. You know, yes, it was nice to see Zach Eady if you're a Purdue fan, but you know, I would much rather have a rim protector and have four guys out there that can all do great things instead of just you know like when Illinois had Kofi. You know, I know it drove Coleman Hawkins crazy. Just throw the ball in the post and you stand around and you watch. And, you know, and if you were lucky, you got to kick back out. But that didn't happen until his junior year because his freshman, sophomore year, he couldn't pass it very well. So, but again, you know, this is a great, you know, I mean, depending upon what publications you look at, if you're a recruiting fan and, you know, Illinois has one of the top two or three recruiting classes in the country in the transfer portal already. And let's keep in mind, we talk about guys that rim protectors. The one guy I do not want to forget about, and it's so easy to do, is Marez Johnson. I'm not saying he's going to come in and he's going to be the next, you know, Kofi, but he's a big, strong enough kid to where I think he can just be on the floor to play defense. And he's 6'10". He's a lot stronger, a lot stronger than, you know, uh, than Booth. Yeah, and, and I look at – we don't know what's going to happen next year. People thought Morez might come in and play the four. Now he could come in and play some five. Folks, Kedrick and I, we had him in our top 20 back in November of 2021. So we had him way higher than most people did. This was before he committed to Illinois. This was just by watching him. It, even just by his motor, you have to move him up because he's just going to outplay people because he wants it more and will go after and hustle. Uh, I think he's someone who is is obviously a a somebody who could be a force. The five position, I think, let's kind of transition, uh, is is a position that people are wa watching and waiting to see what Illinois is going to do. Last year, Illinois didn't have a five. Coleman Hawkins, you got to give him credit. He went in and guarded guys who were fifty pounds heavier than him, and didn't complain about it. Uh, did his best, but when you got to you got to guard guys 50 pounds heavier than you and, and taller than you. That's usually not a great combination on the inside. What they're going to do, there may be somebody coming into the portal. We'll find out. Uh, the other thing I noticed is uh, the top 50 center, uh, Samto Ciro, decommitted from Kentucky. Now, if you, if you look at his films, uh, S-O-M-T-O, first name, and uh, Cyril, C-Y-R-I-L, 
he is is something else at at six foot eleven and two fifty two fifty five. He reminds me of a Kofi before you know, but but can move quicker. And I will. I really thought it was interesting with him because he was a shot bro- blocker. He blocks almost all of his shots left handed, so it was kind of interesting to see this kid can get up. And in terms of just a pure, I will dunk the ball and I will block the shots of people who try to do it. I wonder if a kid like that, you put him in more as, I know you don't want to play freshman, but boy, that'd be a one, two punch. That would be really tough. It would be tough. And, you know, like I can say to you, I mean, and it's not 100% a foregone conclusion. It's a small window that Coleman could be back. I mean, exactly. I'm not saying, not saying it's going to happen, um, but I know that window is still there, and he's kind of you know kept things close you know to his vest. But they need a rim protector. I mean, let's call it you know spade and spade. You know they need a rim protector because you cannot continue to give up you know twenty five and thirty points in the paint all the time. And if you're going to do that, you definitely can't do it one on one. I mean, it's just a recipe you know for disaster. You know, um, you saw that against UConn, and it wouldn't have mattered because UConn is just on a diff- they were on a different level. But you have to be able to have somebody who could go out because look at the rest of the Big Ten. I mean, they're all going to go out. They're going to get big because that's the way the conference is. And if you if you're not prepared for it, you know you're going to get a couple more losses. And a couple more losses make all the difference in the world. Seedings, for example, I I personally think if Terrence Shannon didn't miss six games, Illinois is probably a two seed. You know, maybe even a one seed, which then you don't run into Connecticut, and then you have a chance to go to the Final Four. So those wins matter, and I know they're going to put together a tough schedule. If you remember, uh, Tennessee comes to Champaign this year. Missouri is starting to load up. I think they've started to figure out, and and they've been reading what we put on Twitter about this portal because you know a lot of schools are utilizing it. And some people think it's a bad look, and I get it. It's a it's a culture shock for a lot of people. You know, Monty Hansberry, you know, went to the portal. A lot of people didn't like it, but you know what? Four or five hours later, you have another guy who was probably just as athletic and taller, you know, as Monty. And so, I mean, I get it. I mean, it's it's different, but you got to, if you don't play the game, you're going to be behind all these other schools who continue to be stubborn. You know, like I'm, I'm not criticizing certain schools, but I don't see Michigan State out there. I don't see Purdue out there. You know, I put on Twitter today, you got 18 teams in the conference, and I'm telling you, you better be able to compete because somebody's going to take 18th place. Yeah, and and Jawan Howard's not there to do it. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be a competition. Now, the other thing is, and, and again, we want to underscore this, for all we know, there's still a couple more weeks of the portal. For all we know, there could be a, a, a good five who's just about to enter the portal and Illinois might have an opportunity at, at, at that individual. And, of course, out there is is, is at the wing positions, A.J. Store, And Illinois does need somebody who can put the ball on the floor and create. We saw how valuable that was when your offense was having troubles and you could just say, here, Terrence, why don't you score? And, and he could – they didn't have to run a play for him. It was just Terrence. I'm going to tell you this. There are some players out there that aren't in the portal yet. And I know that, you know, when they become in a portal, whether it be, the, you know, they're going to throw their name in the NBA hat, Illinois is going to be involved with some of those players. And why wouldn't they be? They are, they have done extremely well. They, they've done a great job in the portal. Um, and it's so it, the players know it's okay. You can come in while you can win. Um, you're going to be successful doing so. The AJ Store thing, I'm just going to put this out there. I mean, because it's kind of frustrating me just a little bit. So, this is probably going to be the highlight. If you want some views, Mike, you're about to get it. I'm just, it stinks because that's one kid that I know when the portal opened up, I was 99.9% locked in. I knew this kid was going to be, was going to play to Illinois. And I just wish. Some of these people, they were realistic and they would do things to force coaches' hands or say things that they shouldn't say. This is a business. And wherever you go, you send your kid to a school, I mean, yes, you want your child to be taken care of, but you have to be smart. Nobody, I don't care, I'm I'm not talking to AJ Store right now, but if anybody thinks they're going to come in and demand a uh, Bill Self or a Brad Underwood or Tom Izzo, and you're going to tell them what you're going to do, you're not playing for them. I mean, you could be the nicest guy in the world. I'm telling you, 
it's not going to happen. Fred Hoiberg, to me, is is a true gentleman. I I don't hide that. But if you think you're going to go to Nebraska and say, here's the deal, Mr. Hoiberg, I want you know, nine hundred thousand dollars. I want my husband to get a car. I want my, you know, my son to get a car. And like Oprah Winfrey, you get a car. Everybody get a car. It's not happening. It's just not realistic. And by doing that, you do a disservice to your child. And so, to me, I just that part of the portal I don't like. But back to AJ Store, he's that guy, Mike. He's that one guy that I think who's that alpha dog. You need that that guy who could put the ball on the floor. And I'm gonna tell you if. They could ever figure it out, meaning they, whoever is giving him advice, could ever figure this out. And if he, he didn't end up at Illinois, I guarantee it when the polls come out, they'll be a top five team in the country again in preseason. And they will have a legitimate shot at the Final Four again. This roster is put together nice. Kylan Boswell is great. There's another player that's probably, I would think, become coming close to committing. And we're not going to say that unless you subscribe to Atlanta, guys. So they're going to have a really good roster, a really good offensive roster, athletic guys again. So they're not done. By any stretch of the imagination, Illinois is not done. Yeah, and I, I do think it is it is fair to say that for a lot of these families, this is their first time of, of being at this level and doing negotiations like this. How many people can say they've negotiated, let's say, just for giggles, a million-dollar contract? Uh, that that's something that you just don't do in life unless you're in some sort of sales position or an extremely talented at, at something. And it is very hard to not let the dollars get in the way of everything else because we know that 2% of players make it to the NBA and the NFL. So for many players, I'm not saying AJ store is one. I'm not, but I'm saying many players, their NIL funds, if they can make, let's say $2 million in four years, that can be a fantastic start to the rest of their life and put them in a fantastic position. And they may never, ever get close to the NBA. People don't understand how good NBA players are until you go to an NBA game and you sit down in that lower bowl and you can stand and you see how big, how fast, and how good they are. Folks, the best player you've ever seen might be the guy who's the 13th player on the end of an N- NBA bench who can't get in the game. Well said. And so, yeah. and so they're the, the parents who are trying to figure out, you know, how, how they help their kid. I can see where they, they get that feeling. But unfortunately, as you said, there isn't a human being on this planet who's going to walk into Bill Self, Brad Underwood, or Tom Izzo and tell those three gentlemen respectively what they are going to do. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And I mean, as soon as you, if once you start doing that, you lose all control. And that's just not going to happen. I mean, it's a tough business to begin with with this NIL. And I think it's great. I, I don't think it's going to last this way because I think it's going to get out of hand at some point and they're going to have to reel it in. But, you know, and if you're not good at negotiating, obviously ask other people, other, you know, agents involved to say, hey, what's, you know, what's realistic and what's not realistic? Because again, I said on our last podcast, some of the numbers you see put out here, they're false. But on the flip side, if there's any recruits listening to this and you think you're going to go in and you, and you think we're stupid, if you don't think these coaches talk, you're kidding yourselves. You see them on the court and they're competing and they're trying to beat each other. But outside, they talk, and especially the, the assistant coaches. When I go to AAU events, Mike, like you mentioned, you sit there, they're all hanging out talking and talking about the same kid. And I can assure you, assure you they're talking about that loony parent out there <laughs> who's asking to be the next president of the United States from them to make it happen. There's people out there like that. And I just don't understand why you would do that to your child. Because if you, I want to give Rodney Hawkins, Coleman Hawkins, that credit. He made the comment to me, Winning will take care of everything. If you win, and because if you the the scouts are going to see, you're winning because of the reason. Look at the success that Illinois had this year, and look what it did for Terrence Shannon. Here's a guy that was in the what second round all of last year, and he was on one of the best teams in college basketball. And if you believe in the, these draft boards, he is in everybody's top twenty, yeah. top twenty-five. Some in the, as a lottery. So Rodney's right. You have to win. So if you want your son to be able to be in that 2% or your daughter, or whatever, then you go to a school where your son 
and succeed and win games. And I'm going to tell you, this is an Illinois podcast. Illinois is going to win basketball games. Brad Underwood liked what happened, and, you know, he got that taste of the final eight, and he's not done. He wants more of it, and I'm sure the fans want more of it because it was a great ride last year. Yeah, I totally agree. One last thing, of course, you mentioned it, Amani Hansberry into the portal. Um, he was a guy who, a little bit star-crossed, that back injury didn't allow him to show as much as what we would have loved to have seen from him. Seemed to be a great teammate. And I think he's a kid who he's probably really what a lot of colleges would like to have. He's a little undersized, but he makes up for that in his intensity and his effort on the court. I think he's going to do a wonderful job. Obviously, the rumors are that he's going to end up at West Virginia with uh, Chester Frazier. Who knows what's going to happen? But boy, I think he's going to make some school very happy when he transfers there. And, of course, we wish him nothing but the best of luck. I just – I don't want to contradict myself. And, you know, I said this is a business, you know, to the coaches, and I understand it. But, you know, I had a feeling he was going to leave. But when it became reality today, this one kind of is, is stung a little bit because I like the kid. I think he had what you said. He had potential. He was a great teammate. He didn't sulk. There was never a time – on that bench, when if he didn't play, if, if he didn't play for six minutes, or if he if he played six minutes, excuse me, or he didn't play for three, four games, he was still the same. And I like that, and he had talent. So this one, yeah, it kind of rubs me the wrong way, but I I do I understand it. I, I it's a business, and you know he has to do what's best for him. But he's one guy I can honestly tell you I will follow his career regardless of where he goes to play because I want to see him succeed. He was a he was very you know polite to me. His family was polite to me when you know when Illinois was recruiting him. I don't burn bridges with those people. Those people have been great to me over the years. So I want to see him succeed. Not all the kids succeed, but you know obviously I do want to see that. But he was just it was tough. So but I get it because again you think about it, you got Trey White. There's another guy that's out there. I mean that's a who could play the four, you know, and Luke Goody is still there. So as of right now, so the way you look, I look at it, the, you know, they want to get better. They, you know, they may see things differently and how they could, you know, how they want to play. Maybe he didn't fit into that. Yep. And, and like I said, it, coaches have to make a lot of hard decisions and, and players have to make a lot of hard decisions. We wish them all the best. And until they come and play against the Illini, then we, we don't want them to do as well because we want the Illini to come out with the W. So, we wanted to give you a real quick podcast here to let you get up to date on what is going on with the Illini. You want to stay real close to the IlliniGuys.com. There's a lot of expectations that potentially could be another commitment coming relatively soon. And every time, you know, there's, there's people going into the portal, people going out of the portal. So you really have to stay tuned as the roster forms and I tell people, don't get upset now. You want to see what it looks like when they go into the season. That's the first thing. And then the real report card comes next April, 2025, when we see where they finish. The report card got a lot of good marks this year because you had an Elite Eight. And that's really how we judge our teams now is what they do in the NCAA tournament. Ked, you have any final thoughts? Stay tuned because this isn't over. There's going to be more commitments and – could be more players leaving. It's the way it is. So it's exciting. We knew this was going to happen in April, so we're not done. Let it play out. Lipo is what Brad Sturdy says, and that's exactly what is going to happen. Thank you.